Okay, well, welcome everybody officially, and thank you for joining us for today's Lunch and Learn discussion. Uh, my name is Corey Miller, and I'm the Executive Director at the Cabbage Patch, and I'll be serving as your host for today. Um, this afternoon, we are going to be learning about a very important part of the Patch, our College Scholar Program. This fantastic program is led by the talented Brandy Giles, our Educational Opportunities Manager. Hello, Brandy. Um, we also have the good fortune to have three College Scholar Program members. Please welcome Janae Penix Ellington, who's a sophomore at Fisk University. Hello, Janae. Uh, then we have uh, Jayla Bailey, uh, a senior at Northern Kentucky University. Hello, Jayla. Hi. And we have Ladarius Strickland, a high school senior at Mail, who hopes to attend UK. Hello, Ladarius. How you doing? So, um, along with us from the Cabbage Patch are Megan Levine, Director of Programs, Jennifer Scott, Director of Development, Marketing, and Support Services, Jesse Hendricks Inman, PR and Grants Manager, Patrick Longest, Digital Content Specialist. And is there anybody else that I'm missing? I don't believe so. So that is all from me. I'll turn it over to our host, uh, Brandy. Thank you, Corey. I'm going to share my screen. Thank you, Corey. Um, like you mentioned, my name is Brandy Giles. I'm the Educational Opportunities Manager at the Cabbage Patch, and I uh, directly oversee our College Scholar Program. If at any point you have a question, um, I think Corey said to wait until the end, but if something pops up along the way, I don't mind stopping for a moment. Just unmute yourself and go ahead and ask. So what is the College Scholar Program? The Cabbage Patch College Scholar Program is a preparation, scholarship, and mentorship program that we provide here um, for all of our members who are in college. We seek to support our members' financial, academic, and personal success. Some of the ways in which we do that are, we remove barriers that our scholars may experience um, in getting into college. We do this by demystifying the college process from beginning to end with in-depth years-long college prep training that begins as early as middle school. We provide a scholarship to alleviate some tuition concerns. We provide additional financial assistance during hard times, more on that later. And we provide personalized support and guidance throughout our members' entire college career. We consider ourselves to be a personal resource for our scholars. Some of the resources we provide are, we help navigate the financial aid and administrative concerns that arise. We act as an advocate for our students' needs at the university level. We're able to provide class scheduling, time management, and career class counseling for all of our scholars in school. Sometimes, if it's needed, we provide transportation to and from college for our members. And we also provide employment and internship opportunities, not only with the Cabbage Patch, but also with our partners and other um, affiliates. We consider education to be the priority of the program. We want our scholars to successfully graduate school with a degree. And some of the ways that we support our scholars' education needs is to provide one-on-one -on -one remote and in-person homework help when needed. We provide access to Cabbage Patch uh, school supplies or materials and resources for projects. And we also can send our members um, supplies that they may need directly to them. And we also provide an academic intervention plan for members who have a GPA lower than 2.0. So we really consider ourselves to be a one-stop college shop for all of our members in school. A few points of data. Currently, we have 34 uh, scholars in school. We have 30 who are full-time, three who are part-time, and one pursuing his master's. On average, each of our members receives a $1,500 a semester scholarship from us. That's $3,000 a year for full-time students. And we provide $750 a year um, 
I'm sorry, a semester for part-time students. On average, our uh, collectively, our members have an average GPA of 2.75. That's from the fall semester. And we are on track to have eight college graduations in May of 2021. And seven of our uh, current high school members will graduate into the program in May of 2021 as well. Although that seems as though we will lose as many members um, as scholars as we will gain. In fact, many of our seniors are planning to go into graduate school, so we will continue to support them as well in whatever way we can, meaning, meaning that they will stay in the scholar program. Currently, 27 of our members are pursuing a bachelor's degree. Six of them are pursuing an associate's degree and one is pursuing his master's. Our scholars attend uh, 12 schools currently, both within Kentucky and um, throughout the United States. Um, the list of schools is on your right. And this graph shows how many scholars attend each school. You'll notice that UK has the most scholars. That's likely due um, to the fact that UK provides an exclusive scholarship to our members, and I'll describe that more in detail later. Uh, we also have several members at JCTC and at other state schools like NKU and WKU. Some elements of the program will include, so as I mentioned, we really consider ourselves a one-stop college stop for our members. We really wanna provide any assistance we are able to um, and guidance as well. Specifically, we help with all um, parts of the college admissions process. Um, that includes helping them complete their FAFSA, uh, their senior year, helping them apply to different colleges, um, helping them find scholarships and helping edit essays for scholarships. Um, we really do help with all ends of the um, admissions process. When our scholars are in school, we maintain regular communication with them and offer personal guidance throughout their college career. We uh, still provide homework help. Uh, it's uh, really important that our scholars feel academically supported when they go to college just the way they were um, when they were a regular member in our programs. We help solve administrative disputes or financial aid concerns. And that really becomes very helpful because a lot of the time things arise, uh, problems arise for our scholars and they don't know exactly who to ask. Colleges, you know, there's a lot of staff at colleges, they're not really sure who to go to. Um, a lot of times, especially for those 12 schools that I showed you, uh, we know people on staff there who we can ask directly um, to help solve problems that arise for our members. So it really helps to have us as a liaison between um, our student and the college staff. We offer additional financial assistance during hard times. We help with moving in and out of college, as mentioned before, and we also provide internship, co-op, and employment opportunities. Finally, I consider um, us to have an open door policy. And what that means is it doesn't matter to us how long it takes a scholar to finish school. If they go part-time for a few years and then have to go um, beyond the four years to achieve their bachelor's degree, um, that doesn't matter. We will still continue to support our scholars. A lot of times um, scholars may um, drop out of the program for a few years and then um, see that they need to come back and finish their degree. Uh, we are still there for them no matter how long they may not be in the program. Um, so more about helping during hard times. So as you can imagine, during the uh, school shutting down in, early, in March of 2020, many of our members um, had really hit a rough time because of COVID. Um, a lot of them lost their jobs and were unable to um, provide for themselves and buy food and supplies. 
um, a lot of them, their schools were actually shut down and they were asked to leave abruptly. Um, so what we decided to do, uh, myself and another education staff member at the Cabbage Patch, we traveled to many of our schools um, and gave food and supplies to um, our scholars. Um, the pictures on the right are us um, going to the scholars who directly needed help um, with food and assistance. And at the top right, that's a picture of Sharonda, one of our scholars. Uh, she went to Berea and Berea at one point said, okay, all of you guys out. Uh, they really didn't give um, the students much of a chance to get everything together. So I traveled there, we packed up all her stuff and she has moved, and in this picture, she has moved all of her stuff into a storage unit that was shared by three other girls and I said, there's no way we can get all your stuff in here. And this gesture is her explaining, yeah, I guess I did it. So um, that was something that we were able to help her with. We were still also able to um, do ACT prep. Um, here in the lower right hand corner is a picture of me handing um, Ladarius an ACT booklet. Um, he still um, wanted to do the ACT in July, so we have him prepared for that. I took him there and he did a great job. Um, so that still happened even during um, the time that our staff was working from home um, from March to July. And we also um, made sure that we increased efforts to connect with scholars and ensure their mental and physical health. So even during hard times like the pandemic, we took it as an opportunity to do additional outreach for our scholars. Some current partnerships that we have, as I mentioned, uh, UK offers our students an exclusive scholarship. Um, they um, cover the cost of tuition, room, and books um, um, all the way up to $5,000 or $7,500. Uh, this is a change from our last dollar scholarship that we have at UK from 2011 to 2020. Um, that full ride scholarship was reduced to only providing an additional 5,000 or 7,500, but that it's still extremely helpful for many of our scholars. This year, we also were able to um, achieve a partnership with UofL where their Carl F. College Scholarship was amended in fall 2020 to um, give our scholars first consideration when receiving the scholarship. The scholarship is $7,000 a semester for two students and they can have that $7,000 a semester for four years. And finally, Bellarmine, we're very excited that we have been in talks with Bellarmine for um, a little bit over a year. And finally, we finalized an agreement where they will provide um, scholarships to our members that will decrease the cost of attendance um, to only 4,500 per year. Uh, and considering the quality of the education we have at Bellarmine and also the normal cost of attendance, our members only needing uh, 4,500 per year is an extreme boon and we're really grateful to have that, that partnership. So our goals for the College Color Program include, we want to um, successfully graduate more and more of our current scholars within the five year period as I said, we have an open door policy. It can take them as long as they need, but uh, we will make efforts for them to feel supported enough to graduate within five years. We would like to have 50 college scholars in college by 2020 fully supported um, in our programs. Uh, we want to increase the number of freshmen, freshmen that are entering the program from eight to 12, which is what we have now, to 10 to 15. Uh, we wanna be able to accommodate more scholars. Uh, we want to increase the average GPA of current scholars to a 3.0. We want to expand our college and career readiness programming. And we want to increase our number of partnerships with schools and organizations. Oh, I'm sorry, not quite yet. So a few ways that donors can help 
financial contributions always ensure that our scholars that we can have more and more scholars year after year. Um, donors in the past have collected dorm room items for our students to use um, in also school supplies. It's really helpful. Um, you can offer to mentor a scholar who has your same career field. Um, give them advice and guidance as they continue, continue in that career field. Um, if you have job opportunities, either with your organization or one that you've heard, um, you can share that with us and we can share it with our graduating scholars. You can host college scholar parties. Uh, the picture you see here is at um, Bill Meyer's house. That's where we had our last in-person Christmas party with our scholars. Um, that's something that our scholars really look forward to. So um, that's um, something that donors can do as well provide a space for college scholar parties. And if you have um, any knowledge of college, colleges that are interested in partnering with nonprofits such as ours, um, it'd be really helpful to provide inroads um, to developing those partnerships. Okay, so this is actually for uh, Jayla Jeanne and Ladarius. Um, you guys can answer any of the questions that you like. Um, you might want to start by um, reintroducing yourself and um, then answering a few questions. I'll start with our senior, Jayla. You can unmute yourself. Um, I want to answer this. Um, oh, hi, I'm Jayla. I'm a senior at um, Northern Kentucky University. Um, I want to answer the COVID question because I feel like I am really involved. I'm a really involved student on campus and COVID has really taken away a lot of like the opportunities to join organizations. Um, it's kind of been hard just, it, it's, it really affected me with my internship. Me being a senior, I had to find an internship and no one would let me in within the healthcare field um, because I'm exercise science. Um, so I was trying to get into a physical therapy clinic um, and it took me like um, almost like a month into the semester to actually find one. So that was a really big thing about COVID. Um, and I also want to answer the question about giving back to the next generation because I think that this program has done so much for me. Just the, the just Cabbage Patch in general. Um, Miss Brandy, you've been great. You've always been there to give me whatever I need, even if it isn't anything related to this program. Um, so the things that I really want to do is be able to come back to the patch whenever we are officially open and just be able to volunteer, talk to some of the seniors or juniors or whatever in high school kids. Um, and let them know that um, I'm always going to be um, a resource that they could talk to as well. All right. Thank you, Jayla. Um, and can I have Janae unmute yourself? Hello, my name is Janae Phoenix Ellington. I'm a sophomore political science major at um, Fisk University. Um, so I'll answer the question about what has been the best part of my college experience, I would say um, one, having a support system because being in college is very different than being in um, high school or middle school or anything like that because you're venturing off to being an adult and that can be challenging. And so having a support system that's motivating you and letting you know that you can do it is very great. And then also being able to um, just find yourself a little. Um, my freshman year, well, I realized that I'm not really a social person once I got to college, but I had to adapt because there were different um, programs that I wanted to participate in and then also volunteer and just be able to enjoy my college experience. So I met new people from different areas and um, they had different backgrounds that really opened my um, thoughts or feelings about being social and meeting new people. And then... Um, the other question, how are you planning to get back to the next generation of scholars? Um, I just want to be able to assist and answer any questions that the scholars may have 
um, that are under me. Like there is CJ that goes to Fisk University. She asked me when she first started um, last semester, she was, we're, we're the same major, major. So she was asking me questions and I was able to help her and guide her and gave her some notes for um, certain classes. So that's how I started off um, helping the next generation. But I just want to be able to um, tutor. And like she said, Julia said, um, not Julia, but I'm sorry. Um, when the patch open backs up, I want to be able to volunteer and just be an assistance to um, any students, um, not in college, but I also want to motivate students to go to college as well. So, yeah. Thank you so much, Janae. And Ladarius, um, you might want to answer questions that relate yeah, I'm to doing. I'm Ladarius Strickland. Um, I feel like the first question is like how COVID, COVID was like, like I'm at high school right now. So COVID, it would just like change everything because I'm I'm at home. So a lot different, like just hands on being with the teachers every day is just a little different. But I feel like the cash patch really stepped up for me. Like just in my whole journey, just like taking that role. Cause like everything, like the teachers can teach you, but it's like, it's like, they they not there with you like they not hands on right like they got other students to worry about so I feel like the extra help that the carriage pass would provide like just being there and actually sitting down with you and breaking everything down and just actually letting you know that they there to help you and guide you on this journey it's like you're not alone and they're gonna really be hands on with you and not just push you to the side they're gonna keep checking up on you and making sure that making sure that you're straight and giving you that guide guidance that you needed. And I know in my life that I needed that. So they played a big part. And I want to come back and give the younger kids, like the little kids that need guidance or just need a, a male role model in their life. I just want to come back and show them that I'm that for them. Like I can get that to them and really provide that. Thank you so much, Ladarius. You're welcome. Does anyone have any questions? I have a question. This is Allison Pittman. Um, it's for the, the scholars. Thank you so much for sharing. It's so great to hear from you guys firsthand what your experiences are like. And I know it's also very difficult and different than what you probably had planned your, you know, immediate college years to look like because of COVID. What are some things or maybe an item or two that you wish you would have had um, as you stepped into college, that could be something material or just thinking about supplies and different things in that nature. What is something you wish you would have had that you didn't? Dela or Janae or? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm it? trying to think, like, I don't know, something that I wish I had. I don't know. Yeah, I'm thinking as well. It's kind of, that's a good question, honestly. One thing... <laughs> Um, that I wish that I had was just like advisors in general, like really like suck for like academic advisors. Um, so I just wish that I had, which I kind of did because I did have mentors and stuff like that. But I think it's important to have someone that you can have a mentor or somebody that connects with you on the same, maybe your same major or something similar to where they can help guide you because the academic advisors have so many people that they just kind of like throw you in this like checkbox and it's like, okay, like these are the classes you should take, okay, bye. Whereas like if you had someone that's like a mentor or something and they like just like stay with, stay keep with you that whole time about like your academics and like what you need to do for all four years, I think that's a good resource. Yes, uh, I some, agree. Yeah, I agree too. Uh, something that I wish I like had, well, when I get to college, I get hope I have like a good support system, like a good sense of family, like like somebody to, like have my back, like just there that like no, I'm not alone. Like if I need help, I can go get it, you know. Yeah, Jayla um did not get into the scholar program until her junior year. Uh, so I'm sorry that they were uh, not helpful to you in the beginning. Um, I wish that I'd known you earlier and I to be able to provide that help. 
Randy, for those of us that have been out of college for a while, uh, go over again sort of the, what the point values on the GPAs mean translated into grades like. So a 2.75 is our average GPA um, and that's about, so in the higher B range. So um, that means a lot of our scholars are doing well in school and that is um, different in general than um, minority students, uh, especially first year students in college. So our program is able to provide that support um, that other students aren't able to have and therefore they achieve a higher GPA on average in first year, uh, especially uh, first year uh, minority college students. Jayla, I have a question for you as a senior. Um, what are you what are you thinking about for next year after you graduate? Yeah, I already have it set out. So what I'm gonna do is I am um sorry, I'm gonna go to a physical therapy school in St. Louis. It's called um Washington University in St. Louis or aka Wash U. Yeah, okay. I see <laughs> I see Chip is excited. Yeah. Um, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm super excited about it. Congratulations. Thank you. I think the professional response to that is, dag, girl, go. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and another thing is that I actually did get a scholarship to go there. And it was really exciting because it's like the, it's either the top or like the top three physical therapy school. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Amazing. That is something that's really exciting over the last couple of years. A new trend we've seen with our scholars is more and more of them are thinking of grad school. Um, I think part of that is our ability to support them in undergrad uh, minimizing debt makes a huge difference because when you're not taking on debt as an undergrad, you're a lot more likely to be ready to take that on as a grad student. Uh, we've already seen, I think, three of the eight graduates this year accepted into grad school, uh, a few more of them applying. So it's just it's becoming more of a trend and one we're going to have to accommodate going forward, but it's an exciting one. Yeah, my friend Janae, who was also a college scholar, um, she is she got accepted into a University of South Carolina, Charlotte. So she is really excited about that. That was her first choice for grad school. She's also in the running to receive a scholarship to go there. So um, many of her costs may be covered. It's really exciting. And as a lot of board members know, we have some excitement uh, related to potential career opportunities as well, and to focus a little more on that even, so. If I can give a quick shout out um, and a commercial uh, back to the idea of connections to the colleges, as I see David Wood on this uh, Zoom and Mike Marshall as well, um, th those situations uh, respectively with U of L and the Carl Pollard Scholarship and Mike with Bellerman, um, it's just who you know a lot of times, as we all know. And so um, somebody that has connections into any of those institutions knows someone on the board. The whole UK partnership started with someone that was on the board at the time, a trustee uh, making connections there. So uh, as you can see, we've got kids in a lot of different places, uh, and that, that's not an exhaustive list. We can send students other places uh, if it's a good match, uh, as long as we can get some help from the colleges to make it happen. So if you know folks, let us know, and let's talk about trying to develop some more partnerships. Thank you, Tracy. It's a great commercial. Can you hear me? Yes. We can hear you, David. Hear David. Yeah. I think if more people would stop and think of the wonderful value of these programs, it, it's a great, it's a, it's a wonderful selling proposition for people that uh, uh, don't know about it. It's unique, the, the Cabbage Patch program and the success it's had sells itself sometime when you talk to somebody who you think might be interested in helping provide scholarships, such as Carl Pollard did, and uh, fortunately, the folks at Bellerman and now Mike is a member of the board and that just ex excites me no end. 
So there may, there are plenty more of them out there if you just stop and think about it. But I think you have to make more people aware of the unique benefits of this program and the success of it. Uh, and uh, ask board members or past board members to think of think of people they think might might help, and you be you might be pleasantly surprised. Thank you so much, David, um, for the support you provided for us. I did want to mention um, that I recently saw a scary statistic that. 29% um, of um, uh, the college enrollment rate for Black students in particular went down by 29% um, from since the beginning of the pandemic. So uh, we've seen less teens as well, obviously, because we're not able to, um, but then there's been less connection. Um, going forward, it's going to be really necessary for having a lot of support for programs like ours so that we can meet kids where they are and make sure that they are stay engaged and get into college because uh, unfortunately this pandemic has really thrown a lot of, of, of students off track so we we do what we can to keep them on track and your support would help. Corey I think we're ready to wrap it up. I think so so yeah we just had a lot of good discussion thank you uh, Brandy, and thank you to all of our college scholars. Um, it's great to have you here, and thanks to all of you for joining us. Just a reminder, um, it is a recorded Zoom, so you'll have a link to this. You'll be able to share it. It'll be under on our website under News and Stories, so just look for it there. And again, um, maybe I'll leave us with a prayer. Let us pray. God, we just thank you for this day and this opportunity to learn more about our College Scholar Program, and we give thanks for uh, for all of our, for, J, for Jayla and Ladarius and Janae and for all of our college scholars, you may we, you continue to bless them. We also lift up our great friend, Tracy Holiday and ask that you continue to work healing in his life. And we pray this all in your holy name, amen.